Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some updates for the player camera controller. We're going to be adding in camera shake as well as a head bob and a little bit of a jolt every time the player jumps or lands. Next week we're going to be moving on to AI stuff but today is going to be a bit of a code heavy day so we're going to jump right into code. So we're here on the player body controller and first off we're going to reorganize this and add a bunch of new variables. So let's go ahead and move these camera node and arm node up here. We're going to create that into a new export category and we also went ahead and added a camera actual instead of just having a camera node we're going to use that as the container of the camera and then use the camera actual as the camera 3d just underneath that then we're going to go ahead and put the animation tree into a new category for itself and all of the animation names are going to go into an export group as opposed to a category for export names if you go ahead and save this you should be able to see on the right hand side now we can collapse up those animations names now we're going to go ahead and group up all these rotation variables as well as the movement variables now we're gonna have to add a fair number of new variables for the camera shake as well as the walking sway and that's going to be the head bob for all intents and purposes and i'm gonna run through these pretty quick so the camera shake noise is going to be a type noise so it'll be like simplex noise light or something like that it'll be definable in the editor and that's just going to be the noise for the camera shake itself different noises are going to result in slightly different visual effects then the noise panning speed is the frequency at which it changes that noise then we have the max power which is the maximum that it can adjust the position of the camera in general as well as the blend speed which is the speed at which we blend in and out of any camera shakes then the return strength is going to be the speed at which we iterate that back down to zero to cancel out any effects noise strength is going to be the base level modification of the noise with the max power being the limiter for that then the falling bias is mostly just going to be used for actually jumping and falling to make sure that we kick up only when we've traveled for a little ways and later on we're probably also going to use that for falling damage but not going to worry about that right now the falling strength fall off is just going to blend it so this way we can blend between no kickback when you land and a lot of kickback when you land depending on how far you fall which we're just going to default to two then the falling max strength is just to make sure that we clamp everything to make sure it doesn't impact too hard and the jumping strength is the opposite size so that's the kick upwards when we're jumping now in addition to this we are going to go ahead and add in our walking sway variables and these are going to be used for all of the head bob so steps per second is going to be used down there human beings actually settled to around three Three, but we're just going to set it to five for now because it just tends to look better. The max sway distance is how far to either side it's able to sway and the hands height and camera heights are how far up or down based off of whether it's negative or not. It is at the tips. Now it's going to be zero at the center so it'll curve upwards or curve downwards. So we're curving down for the hands at each side and up for the camera at each side. Now the blend speed is how fast we're blending into the steps. So the animation swaying back and forth is how fast we convert to that when we start moving and the walking sway bias is just going to make sure that we don't start playing that animation unless we've been walking to some degree that way we don't end up with very jerky motions so we can go down here to the private variables and add a couple things first off we're going to add an arms base position as well as a camera shape position of the vector 3d so the camera shape position is just how far we've drifted off of the baseline camera which is just going to be vector 30 and the arms base position is wherever we started at as the arms can kind of move around based off of adjustment of the character rig we do want kind of a baseline now the walking sway current value is going to be the amount that we've blended into the walking sway back and forth and the time since started is just going to be used to iterate that noise texture so that we smoothly adjust things the last y velocity is going to be used to make sure that we can keep track of how fast we're falling whenever we land now first up in the ready function we're going to go ahead and set our arms base position to the arms node dot position this is just the arms container right here and then we're going to move on down here to the process function and get started here so first off we're going to add to the time since started delta multiplied by the camera shake noise panning speed next we're going to create an if statement where we're just going to check to see if the camera shake position's length is greater than 0.001 a very small amount this just makes sure we don't run this code unless necessary and following this we can go ahead and create our noise vector so we're just going to use the get noise 1d for each of these and we're going to be adding something to the time since started so that that way we get a different value for x y and z we're going to multiply that by the camera shake noise speed and then we're going to multiply that by the camera shake position dot length divided by the camera shake max power the reason why we do this is so that when we're at the maximum distance away from the camera we're getting the maximum amount of noise and when we're up close to where the origin of the camera is we're not moving as much this just scales that based off of the max power there now just below that we're going to go ahead and set up our camera actuals position the reason why we're using camera actual is because the camera container needs to rotate to where the player is looking always and then the camera actual is just going to handle fine-tuned movements like the camera shake and what have you so we're going to use its position dot lerp and we're going to be lerping towards the camera shake position 
plus the noise, and then we're going to be lerping that by the delta multiplied by the camera shake blend speed. So we're never actually reaching it 100%, we're just moving towards it. This makes sure that we don't end up with any super jerky camera movements. Last but not least, we can go ahead and set our camera shake position to lerping towards vector 3.0 using the delta multiplied by the camera return strength. And this is just going to make it return slowly back to zero. And if our camera shake position's length is not greater than that very small number, we just set the camera's actual position to zero. Now right here, we're gonna extend the is not on lore if statement a little bit, and we're gonna add two functions here. First off, we're going to be setting the camera sway current value back down to zero by subtracting from it delta multiplied by the walking sway blend speed. And we're just gonna use the max of that at zero. Besides that, we're also gonna set the last y velocity to the velocity.y. The reason why we do this is if next time we come around and we say we are now on the floor, velocity has already zeroed out. So what we need to know is whatever the last velocity before we landed on the floor was in order to kick the camera a little bit based off of that. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and check to see if the last y velocity is less than negative of the camera shake falling bys. We do this just to make sure it was falling down fast enough. Then we can go ahead and call this function called impulse camera. And that doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and make that down here. So the impulse camera function is not going to be too complicated. It's just going to take a vector and a power, and it's going to add to the camera shake position that vector multiplied by the power. And then it's going to clamp that position based off of the camera shake max power. The reason why I do this instead of just using the limit length is I've had some inconsistent results with limit length, this method just tends to result in a very consistent result. It never goes past that distance away from the baseline camera position. And that's important to make sure we don't get our camera inside of our shoulder or inside of a wall or something. Now that we've done that, we can go back up here to where we are impulsing it, and we're using a smooth step function. Now the smooth step function is a little bit complicated, so I want to go over this and explain how it works. First off, we take the absolute of the last y velocity, so that's it in positive. So if we're going 7 meters a second downwards, then the absolute of last y velocity will equal 7. And then we smooth step it. Now smooth stepping the way it works is it takes the left hand variable and the right hand variable and assumes that the right hand variable is one, the left hand variable is zero, and it places this one in between based off of that scale. So if our right hand variable's falling strength fall off plus our falling bias equals say 10 and our falling bias equals say five and the last y velocity equals 7.5, then the end result of this function will be 0.5 because it's 50% between this one and this one. Then we just multiply that by the falling max strength. And that gives us our impulse force for the camera. Now, besides that, we're gonna do a pretty simple little if statement here to check to see if the velocity's length is greater than the walking sway bias. And if it is, we're gonna go ahead and start iterating upwards our walking sway current value. So we're just adding to it delta multiplied by the blend speed. And if it's not, we're just gonna subtract it exactly like we did up here. Speaking of which, we can go ahead and set up our walking sway. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and set our last y velocity. Then we're going to go ahead and check to see if the walking sway current value is greater than zero. And we're gonna create two variables. The first one's going to be step speed and the second one is going to be step bounce. Now right here, I multiply it by three. I had realized in the other video that I actually had this wrong. I needed to use these steps per second so that that way you actually have control over it. And I had forgotten to implement it. So now we have that. So that's the number of times per second that we'll actually be stepping. Now over here, we have the the time since started times step speed times two plus 0.2. And the reason why we do that is because we're using an ease in and out sign. And we'll go ahead and create that down here at the bottom. Sine waves and cosines, basically all they do is they take a value that is slowly incrementing and just cycle it between zero and one based off of a start and end value. And that's what we're doing right here. We're easing in and out using a cosine and a little bit of math to make it smoothly blend between zero and one. So that way we get a nice swing back and forth. And we're putting into that negative one and one. And for the time, we're using the time since started multiplied by step speed multiplied by two plus 0.2. The reason why we multiply it by two is because we're going out both sides each time. And so we need to go twice as fast as the step speed. And then we're adding to it 0.2 just to make sure that we're offset because if we don't do this, we end up with like a figure eight pattern and it just doesn't look very good. Now we go ahead and multiply that by negative one to invert it and we multiply that by the walking sway max sway hand height. We're gonna do something similar for the horizontal movements, but first off, let's go ahead and create an if statement right here. And all this if statement's going to do is say, if the step bounce equals the max sway height, then we can go ahead and call that as an event. So this will occur once at the top of each step and we can use that later on for sound playing, but for right now, we're just gonna leave that right there. Now for the camera shake, we're gonna do almost identical, but the only difference being 
being that we're going to be multiplying it by the max sway camera height and we're going to be multiplying that by 0.2 if we're aiming and 1.0 if we're not that way we go ahead and steady up that camera a little bit when we're walking while aiming and i probably ought to slow down the movement speed when we're aiming but for now this will work just fine now down here we're just going to go ahead and set our gun effects hand offset position equal to camera node dot transform dot basis multiplied by the ease in and out sway for the left and right and that's just going to be using the step speed but without all of these extras so that the left and right is opposite of the up and down and we're going to be using the step bounce for the up and down and then we're going to be multiplying that by the walking sway current value so we blend in and out of it and we're going to be multiplying that by 0.2 if we're aiming or 1.0 if we're not and last but not least if the walking sway is currently not greater than zero we're just going to zero out the hands offset position now the hands offset position doesn't actually exist in the weapons effects controller so we're going to go do that next but real quick before we do that we're going to go down here just above the impulse camera and we're going to duplicate it for a camera with recoil the only difference being that we're going ahead and calling the impulse camera and we're adding to the target rotation.x the vertical recoil which is up at the top the, all this does is go ahead and kicks the camera up a little bit by manipulating the input values of our target rotation now we can go ahead and save that and move over to weapons effects controller and over here just below the exports we're going to go ahead and create a new variable called hand offset position and it's going to be of type vector 3 we're going to be factoring that in later down below but before we do that we're going to go up to the shot functionality and add in the camera shake power and this is going to be the variable that we pass over to the player body controller now right here where we're setting the global positions of the various IKs we're going to go ahead and add to that the hand offset position and I found that this was just kind of the cleanest way to add in that little additive and it just kind of makes the hand go back and forth while still adjusting to the environment and everything and we're also going to need to add in that on the left hand IK. Now following that, we are going to go down here to the fire revolver function, and we're going to add in a call to a signal. Now the signal doesn't actually exist yet. I forgot to add that up at the top, but we're passing in the back vector of the barrel raycast, so that kicks the camera backwards. And then we're going to be passing in the camera shake power, which we already put up here. But let's go ahead and create that signal. We're just going to create that right here. We're just setting it as a variable of type signal with the on shot camera impulse, and we're passing in an impulse direction and a shot camera impulse. So let's go ahead and save that and let's tie all that together. So if we go over to the weapons effects controller, we should see we now have a camera shake power, but we also have a on shot camera impulse. So we'll go ahead and connect that up to the player body. And we're going to pick the impulse camera with recoil. Now on the player body, let's go ahead and make sure all of our variables are set up. I already broke out the camera container into a separate node. So the camera is just beneath that, but they're in the exact same location and rotation. If I go to the gun effects, I can go ahead and assign that as per usual. I can set the camera actual to the camera 3D and the camera nodes are already set to the camera container so that's fine now down here i am going to need to create a new fast noise light we're just going to use the simplex smooth it'll work just fine if you tweak these you can get different results so have a look at them and see what you like so that should be it let's go ahead and hit play and see what it looks like all right as you can see we've got head sway as well as a bob up and down and some shake when we shoot the gun as well as some difference based off of whether we're aiming down sights or not and that's going to be pretty much it for this week next week we're going to be working on the ai so we're going to be back off of the player controller for a little while we're going to get in spawning ai as well as aggro and we'll see how all that goes we're not going to get too complicated on the ai because it's mostly focused on animation but we do need to get a few things working on that so that that way we can handle jump and being in the air for the AI. But as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.